Hey guys, my name's Mari. I am on staff with Young Saints. I oversee Young Saints worship, which we have some fun things coming your way. Cannot wait to share those with you. Um, and I also help my husband with high school. And can I just say, junior high and high school, we miss you guys. I can't wait till we're all together again. That will be the best when this is all over and we can be in the same room. It'll be so amazing. Can't wait. Until then, I kind of wanted just to bring you in on something the Lord has been sharing with me and I've been personally trying to develop in my own day. Um, I just feel this invitation to develop or even strengthen your secret place. Maybe some of you already have your own quiet time with the Lord. That's amazing. I want to challenge you today to deepen that. Get creative with it. Don't make it just a 30 minute thing, but think of ways you can bring him in to your whole day and really build that connection with the Lord. Um, I think it's easy in our church culture, uh, probably mostly in America, that we can rely on a church service to be our connection with God. And we're so used to being reliant on the worship team or the speaker or maybe the person you get prayer from after, which all of those are amazing, necessary things. But also I just wanna, if we can take this moment of time that we're giving where things have slowed down a bit, and I know it's not a great season for some people, for a lot of people, um, but we can really just use it to take time, like, okay, things have had to slow down because of what's happening. I'm gonna choose to build my connection with the Lord so that I'm not reliant on those corporate settings. I only add to them because I already am being filled personally so that when I go into a corporate setting, I'm actually able to bring something rather than always needing to take, if that makes sense. Um, we're gonna read Psalms 27. I don't have time to read the whole thing, so read the whole thing on your own this week in your own quiet time. It's a beautiful chapter. Um, Psalms 27 verse four. Here's the one thing I crave from God. I love that, love it. The one thing I seek above all else. I want the privilege of living with him every moment in his house, finding the sweet lovely, loveliness of his face, filled with awe, delighting in his glory and grace. I wanna live my life so close to him that he takes pleasure in my every prayer. Verse five through six, in his shelter, in the day of trouble, that's where you'll find me. For he hides me there in his holiness. He has smuggled me into a secret place. I love that. Where I'm kept safe and secure, out of reach from all my enemies. Triumph and now I'll bring him my offerings of praise, singing and shouting with ecstatic joy. Yes, listen, and you can hear the fanfare of my shouts of praise to the Lord. Love this. Love, love, love. We're going to break it down in a few different ways. But the first thing I kind of took from that is I love the idea of having the privilege of living with him every moment in his house. I love that because it shows you that God is not contained to a church service or else you wouldn't be able to experience him every moment and live in his presence. So it shows me that God is accessible in your home. He's accessible in your room. He's accessible in your kitchen. He's accessible in your backyard. He is accessible to have him be a part of every moment of your day. And you can have his presence be a part of your life every day. And I just felt like that was so encouraging and also challenging of like, wow, do I acknowledge God in every moment? Do I feel him in every moment? Am I even aware that he's around in every moment? And I just want to challenge you if that's you and you're like, Man, I don't think I acknowledge God in every moment. Start trying to in your day. Make small goals of like, okay, or even set reminders on your phone like 10 a.m., your quiet time, 12 p.m., make sure you acknowledge God or give him thanks for this. Or you can even set up little reminders to help you learn how to create the habits of acknowledging him and bringing him a part of your every day. Um, the next thing is I just feel like so many of you guys might be experiencing different things. Some of you might be like, I am not even affected by this virus, besides the fact that I'm in quarantine. Um, some of you are like, I am deeply affected. I know people that have lost their jobs. I've known people with the virus. I mean, I have people in my life that are affected and it affects me. I have one of my closest family members recently lost their job because of all this. And that was hard. I, I was affected by that because they're not just like a distant relative. They're very close, my immediate family actually. 
Um, and so instantly with that, I felt fear. But also being in quarantine, a lot of us are used to filling our time and somewhat being distracted by busyness that we may not have been aware of what's going on in our internal world. And we might have realized, wow, I'm, I'm being a little more insecure than I thought I should. Or the fact that my friend hasn't reached out to me as much as they I thought they would have, that's kind of making me feel a little alone. Or maybe you're experiencing anxiety or fear or whatever it is. Sometimes when you're alone with your internal world and you may not have known because you've been distracted or busy, you may not be aware of what's going on really inside of you. And when you take the time to slow down, you might be like, why am I feeling all of these things? This doesn't make sense. I was fine before and now I don't even know what to do with all these emotions. If that's you, I want to encourage you. Something that I've been doing since we have so much time and I'm trying to bring him throughout every part of my day. For example, when I found out my family member lost their job, fear came in and I was like, oh my gosh, how are they gonna make it? What does this look like for our family? How is this gonna affect us? Are they gonna be okay? And I just kind of started spiraling with all those what if questions. And I went and I just let the Lord, I went and sat with the Lord. It wasn't even alone. I was outside in the front yard with my family, but I went and sat and I intentionally focused my heart and my mind on God. And I said, God, I'm feeling fear and I need you to replace it. There's obviously a void that fear can come in and take place in. So I need you to remove the fear that's in this void and you replace it. And so I, and I've been doing that throughout this whole thing of if an insecurity comes or if doubt came in or another time of fear, I would go and I would sit with the Lord and let him fill that area until that fear or anxiety or that insecurity settles and I can feel the difference of his presence being there. It's kind of like when my girls are afraid, I'm not like, if they tell me they're scared, I'm like, oh, okay, you're scared, thanks for letting me know. I'll be out here, I'm here, but just let me know if you need anything. No, I would never do that as a parent. I would go and I would sit with them and I would let them feel my presence near until the fear left really important that we realize that God is a good father. He's not just saying, good luck out there. Hope y'all make it through this. He's wanting to be near and wanting to have his presence calm our anxiety, to calm our fears, to calm our insecurities and replace those with confidence in who he is. And I think if we can just take the time since we have it to slow down and when something comes up, realize it, don't feel shame over it. Just say, oh, there's more room for God than I realized in my life and let him go fill it. And it doesn't have to be just in your quiet time. This could be throughout your whole day. And it's really important that we invite him into that whole, the whole process of your day because you might not feel all these fears in your quiet time. You might feel them right before you're going to bed and you need to take the moment to slow down and say, God, I'm feeling this. This insecurity is here, this loneliness is here and I need you to fill it. And I want you to invite people into your process. Don't feel like just because you can't see people that you have to be alone. Call people, FaceTime, Instagram, whatever it means to make sure that people are knowing what you're feeling. Like when I would have these fears or insecurities, I would text my friends saying, hey, I really battled this. This is what I did. I went and sat with the Lord until it settled. But I want you to know I'm struggling with these thoughts and fears and I, I just need people to know where I'm at. I never want to get to the end of this and people are like, oh, you went through all that and you didn't tell us? So it's important to bring people into your process, but also make sure Jesus is the number one in this season, that you're intentionally building connection with him. This is the greatest opportunity to have some time to make sure you're involving him in your day and you're not, you can't be reliant on a corporate setting. So this is perfect time to build that secret place of where he's covering you and you're hiding in his shelter in that day of trouble and you're allowing him to make you feel safe and secure. I wanna end with this verse 14, it's the same chapter, Psalms 27 verse 14. And I kinda of just thought this was an amazing verse and I feel like, oh, this is probably what we'll say at the end of all this. And it says, here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up, don't be impatient, be entwined as one with the Lord, be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting for he will never disappoint you. I love that. I feel like that's how we're gonna come out of this of we were in a season of waiting and we realize he never disappoints us. He's gonna come through. He's still a God of victory. He's still the one that can manage and crush all of our fears. 
and release confident in your insecurities. He can fill the place of loneliness when you feel alone. I mean, he is the God of the impossible with what we're facing. He's still the same. And even though we're in a season of waiting, I just know we won't be disappointed. And I feel like if we choose, like this says, to be entwined as one with the Lord in this season and to pull on his, cur his courage and to pull on his hope so that we have the ability to keep moving forward, I just feel like we're gonna come out of this going, wow, you didn't disappoint me. I couldn't see everything you were doing in that season of waiting, but now on this side, I realize I'm so much stronger because of the choices I made to pull in, not be hidden, and choose to let you love me and see my insecurities and to see all the ugly fears that I have. And I chose to let your love in in those places and you're gonna come out going, wow, I can't believe those few weeks, that's what happened. So I just wanna pray for you guys and we'll end here. Um, yeah, I just, Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing in the earth. We thank you for how you're moving. And God, I just pray that we would choose, give us grace to choose, to push in, in the midst of insecurity or fear or doubt, that we would lean in to the secret place. We would find you in there and we would sit in your presence until all of these things settle. And you would teach us how to love you. You would teach us how to worship you. And in return, we would learn so much of who you are through this season and that you would show us who we are supposed to be in you. We love you so much, Jesus. Thank you for being near to every person in trouble and every person in crisis and to those who aren't. I just thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us in this season. We love you. Amen. I love you guys. I hope this helped. And yeah, we can't wait to see y'all next week. Love you guys.